Hey everyone, this is Dr. Mike, host of the free iTunes podcast, Psychiatrist Secrets Revealed, but that's not why I'm here. This is another Saving Savvy episode. This one's kind of a complicated video for me to do because I'm not talking about facts, I'm talking about feelings. Camera feelings, of all things. And I wanted to do this video since the beginning of this year. This is 2018. I wanted to do this since January of 2018. I didn't know didn't do it because I didn't know how it would translate well. But what convinced me was actually a viewer's comment. Viewer was Raza Pavlova, who said, Sony beats the Canon by a small margin when it comes to image quality. However, nothing can compare the versatility of a traditional Canon DSLR camera. And I thought to myself, ha, huh, Raza gets what I'm talking about. I get, of course, what I'm talking about. Other people must get it too. I'm going to do this video. What the heck? But the good thing about this video is, is that if your opinion is completely different from mine, you're right. But so am I. Because this is an opinion piece, but I'm really doing it because I want you to think about your own experiences with cameras and to go beyond numbers and charts and that kind of stuff. So let's make an assumption. All modern cameras, we're talking about really all modern cameras, but certainly if you get to a certain level where you get to a little bit bigger sensor size, they all take wonderful, wonderful pictures. In fact, cameras have taken wonderful pictures for 10 years, let's be honest, right? So, so there's got to be something more than just the picture quality or the fact that it's you know 1 80th of a stop better in something. And that's what I want to talk about today. But to do that, I have to tell you stories. And these are some stories about me, um, and they're really to stimulate you thinking about how you approach photography and your cameras. So I have to go way back to around 2000. So around 2000, I had some compact cameras that took good enough pictures to make like an eight by 10. Uh, these are like three, four megapixel cameras. Um, and I love taking pictures and apparently I have a bit of a knack to either frame things correctly or capture an emotion correctly or anyways I make photographs that people like to look at and so in the early like like 2000 or so people started asking me to do more professional type of photography and I was doing things like headshots and shots for brochures and things like that, and newsletters. Um, and I even shot a couple of weddings using, doing all of this with a comp, with compact cameras. And people liked it, so I thought hey, this is all fine and good. So in 2003, Canon introduced in the United States the first sub $1,000 DSLR. In this country, it was called the Digital Rebel Kiss. In the rest of the world, it was called the, oh, I wrote these down, it was, it was called the 300D. And uh, this camera seemed pretty revolutionary, so I bought one. And of course, my picture quality was better because it, it was a bigger sensor, but I still kept on using it mostly in automatic or in scene mode because I just didn't know any better and I really didn't see any advantages of not doing that. So that's 2003. Fast forward to 2006, and I have a patient in, in my practice. I'm a psychiatrist, so this, you know, when I see someone, I'm not just seeing them for 30 seconds. I get to know my patients, and and so I had this patient in my practice who was a nature ph photographer, and he started showing me pictures of some of the things that he did, and he shot a lot of birds, and I just was blown away by these photographs. So he had these photographs of this bird, and there'd be this very beautiful blurred background, and I think. Oh, that is so excellent. What camera do you use? And he said, well, I use uh, a Nikon D80. And I thought, I've got to get myself a D80. So I immediately went out and bought myself a D80. Um, and I think I bought it off of eBay or I don't even know how I bought it, but it was it was one of these things where I got all the wrong, it, this was this whole huge kit that got all the wrong lenses and everything, but I bought it because I didn't know any better. And I started shooting with it and it took nice pictures, but they were nothing at all like his photos which meant there was something missing and that something was in me and that something was my knowledge of how the cameras worked. So it was at that point that I started to understand just basic concepts of photography and um, you know, angle of view and focal length and all, you know, how to um, aperture, all these different things I really started to look at and understand them so I could reproduce these sorts of pictures. And that technology understanding led me with my obsessive compulsiveness to just wonder how other cameras work. So I have always accepted the fact that 
cameras all take good pictures. Even in those days, they took good pictures. But I was more interested in why did this manufacturer conceptualize the camera this way and that one conceptualize the camera that way. So I have a wide variety of cameras, but I mostly have professional camera wise, I mostly have Nikon cameras and Nikon gear. All right, so if you want me to do a professional shot, I'm gonna use my Nikon DSLR of whatever flavor that I happen to think of at that moment. Let's go to now to 2018 in January. So my very dear friend Tom is a general contractor and he asked me if I would start doing some architectural shoots for him. So a lot of these would be exterior shots, but a lot of them were also interior shots, kitchens, bathrooms, family rooms, additions, that sort of stuff. And to sweeten the deal, he said, well, I'll give you a long-term loan of a lens that I have. And it was an original, um, 16 to 35 f 2.8 canon lens and this he had this lens because in 2000 in the year 2000 he was trying to do his own architectural photography and he spent a fortune on a three megapixel canon d30 which was the pro level camera of the day and bought these this expensive uh, wide angle lens and but got tired of it after a while you know i mean let's face it, it's more than just buying the equipment we all know that and put it away but he had this lens he said i'll let you use this lens I said, well great i always like playing around with stuff and because i am a compulsive person and like to explore with different cameras i actually had on hand a canon 5d mark iii i know it's crazy right i just why why would anyone just have one on hand but i happen to have one on hand now the cool thing about this was was i started using that camera the transition was seamless. I love that camera. I still have that camera, of course, but I love using it. I still, I still am using it now when I do his architectural shots. That's not to say I love it more than the Nikon cameras. I love those cameras too. So how could these very different cameras be so, so such a pleasure to use in these settings? Well, it's because they've been fine-tuned. They're big and they're bulky, but that balances their big and bulky lenses. Every little nook and cranny has been tuned and fine-tuned and fine-tuned again. The grip is the right size. Where the shutter button is, it's the right size. And for me, the most important thing is the buttons were labeled. So when I need to change the ISO in a split second, because I'm pressured to do something in a professional shoot, it's right there. When I need to change the um, you know anything on it, the aperture, whatever, it's right there. It's very direct. It's very easy for me to do and they are pleasures to use. However, I would almost never take a DSLR out on a long hike. I will take them out on short hikes and I would never take them on a vacation because, there's, because their strengths then become their weaknesses. Their big bulky everything is just too much to bear. Even if I got a fancy strap, that's, it's just too much of a hassle. So I have found that when I do car trips, I love using micro four third cameras, preferably Olympus cameras. Now I have both Olympus and Panasonic, but I prefer the Olympus cameras. And the one that I really love is not their top of the line one, it's an older one. It's the OMD EM10. I can give it written down here someplace, but you know, I'm always afraid that I'm gonna forget, I'm gonna screw up the numbers, and I'm gonna give you the wrong number, and I probably do anyways, but so I write them down, then I can't find them because I wrote down, say can you put you look at all this junk that I wrote down in here. So I can't even I can't even find what I'm looking for when I need it. Yeah, what are you gonna do? So, but the OMD EM10, and I love, love that camera because it's a little more compact, but it has a lot of manual controls, and I think it looks very cool, and I use that camera. When I went to Alaska last summer, I brought that camera with a couple of lenses, but I brought another camera with me, and that was a Canon GX9. They're super compact, one-inch um, sensor camera, and I love that camera too. It's, it's, it's certainly not the best camera on the planet, but it was so small. It fit in my pocket so well. In fact, I probably used that camera on that trip more than the OMD EM10 because it was so small and so compact and I didn't know it was on me. So I find that there are these cameras that are in these brands that I'm using over and over and over again, despite the fact that I have most of the other brands. So I started thinking to myself, what is it? So I know what's making me use these brands. What's making me not use the other brands? So I have some Pentax cameras, DSLRs, and generally I think they're really awesome cameras. 
but I don't use them very often. And I think part of that reason is because when you power a Pentax camera up, at least my experiences, it takes a while for the focusing system to lock in or something. So for that, let's say it's by your side, oh, here's a picture, power it up, and you're trying to get it to focus, and it's just like lagging. Now, after that first couple of shots, it works just good enough for me, but those first couple of shots are enough of a deterrent that I tend to not to reach for those cameras. What about everyone's favorite, Fuji cameras? Now, the Fuji camera that I've been playing around with most is a Fuji EX-1. Oh, I'd say it's down here. It, it's it's the, or XC-1. Maybe it's the XC-1. I think it's the XC-1, which is a really pretty old camera. Here again, I think it's a sexy looking camera. It's a quality feeling camera. I love having it with me. I love holding it. But I don't use it that office often because, again, I think the focus speed is just a little slow on it. Now, I know the newer cameras have much better focus speed, and I should try some of those, and I will try some of those, but but it, this focus feet speed deter, is, a, a, is, a, is, a detri, it's, is a detriment. So, um, but the cameras that I was most interested in were the Sonys because I have a lot of Sony cameras. I'm always buying them because everyone's saying how great they are. They have great dynamic range. You know, they just get better and better and better. When I use them, I'm pretty happy with the results of the photographs. Um, I think their color science is improving. So all these things are really on the money and they have this gigantic variety. And I do it by one inch Sony sensor cameras. I have my APS-C, I have full frame. I have I even have like one over 2.3 compact camera Sony cameras. So why don't I use them as much as I do? Why would I choose a GX9 Canon, which is an inferior camera to an RX100 series camera when I have RX100 series cameras? In that case, it's because the Canon is just a tiny bit smaller and a tiny bit lighter, and that makes a difference when it's in my pocket. Shocking. Why am I using Canon cameras and Sony cameras when I have full frame, uh, so Canon and Nikon cameras, when I have full frame Sony cameras? Well, there it's a little bit different story. The Sony cameras are so comprehensively, comprehensively um, customizable that nothing is really labeled on them. And every time when I'm in a pinch, especially if I'm trying to do something more professional, I'm going, oh, gotta change the ISO right now. It's like, oh, was that C1 or C2 or is it C3? And they just confuse the hell out of me. And the cameras themselves, because they are so nice and compact, but you still have these giant lenses on them, they just seem awkward for me to hold. So, so even though they have all the specifications, they just are lacking in certain things that I find are necessary for my type of shooting. Now, these may be completely different for you. You might say, well, I like having all the custom, uh, customization. But, but for me, it's almost too much customization. So I invite you to think about this. Are there things about cameras that you particularly like? Maybe you're going to come back and write in the comments, you know, Dr. Mike, I love Sony cameras because... I really like this about them. Or you're going to say, I love Fuji cameras because of this. Or I hate Canon cameras because of that. And you would be completely correct. But I just wanted to bring this topic up just to get you thinking about this, this whole, this whole, the spirit of the camera as opposed to the numbers of a camera. So with that, I'm going to end. And I'd say if you'd like to know more about me, read my personal writing blog. It's drmikekunik.com, D-R-M-I-K-E-K-U-N-A.com. If you want to know more about me and my wife, uh, we do like a psychological podcast called Psychiatric Secrets Revealed. You can find it on iTunes or other podcatching sites. Um, and that's kind of fun and, and interesting, I think, anyways. And other than that, have a great day. Bye, everyone.